Tarang po ni Kuran. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalik wa lam yunad. Wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. Sadaq Allahu lazim. This webinar is basically arranged to know the registration process which are being adopted in Jordan and which will allow the exporters of Pakistan to get entrance in this market. And for that, we do have the welcome note by our director, uh, Shafqatullah Siddiqui Saab. I will uh, request them, I will request him to please say something about the um, session. And it is my privilege to welcome Mr. Hassan Ahmed Abu Zaya, Akumari TIA, Mr. Topical Art Chairman PPMA, and Asif Rauf CEO Jam, and all the worthy participants in the webinar to acquire the knowledge about formal registration procedure in Jordan. First of all, I would yeah. like to welcome you all for joining us in the highly significant webinar. Sitting Avenue to explore Jordan for our pharmaceutical sector. Pakistan pharmaceutical industry is a very competitive. There are nearly 600 pharmaceutical companies operating in Pakistan, including global leaders. The industry presents a lot of growth opportunities for drug manufacturers. Pakistan pharmaceutical export to Jordan is US dollar 0.54 million only. While Jordan pharmaceutical import from world is US dollar 5.2 billion in 19, 2019, which depicts that there is a huge potential available in the bi bilat uh, bilateral trade. The main purpose of this webinar is to be get granular of the standards, certification, and registration issues in Jordan and their way out so that exporters may work on these requirements to avail the opportunities in the Jordan market. The webinar will also highlight regularity and the certification requirement. I hope that the, part particip the participant will grab quality of knowledge and will gain awareness to develop sustainable languages with the Jordan counterpart. Thank you very much. Now I would request to moderator to invite the respectable speaker. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. Now I would request Mr. Tokiru Haq, who is the chairman of PPMA, to say something about the pharma industry of Pakistan. Uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Toki Rulhak. I am chairman of uh, Pakistan Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and our industry to attend this important webinar, which will lead us to know how ably and effectively we can, you know, enter in Jordan uh, market for export. The Pakistan pharmaceutical market at this point in time is about more than 3.2 billion US dollar. And in terms of Pak rupee, this is 485 million, uh, billion to the market. And the good thing is that uh, uh, national pharmaceutical industry of Pakistan uh, have more than 70% market share now, which clearly depicts that how ably and effectively local industry is consistently growing over the years. 20 years back, this was vice versa when multinational companies have more than 80%. But now Pakistan pharmaceutical market is continuously growing. And this is the right time that industry and PPMA as an overall thinks that now the next destination is to enter into export market. So we are all set with the help of our regulatory authority draft 
and the government intention and willingness is also to to expand export that means that the government pharmaceutical industry and draft they are all yes. on the same page and we are this is the very, very right time. this is the very right time to you know think about export the pharmaceutical export at this point in time is 210 million us dollar in 2019 growing by 9.4% pakistan pharma export has the potential to reach more than 3 billion pakistan is exporting to many countries especially in the asean yeah. and the african region pakistani pharmaceutical companies are putting uh, special emphasis on producing quality medicines to serve not only the local market but the international market as well we are extensively working to promote increased sophistication in our manufacturing processes and compliance as per the international standards as the chairman of ppma we always encourage manufacturers Sorry. to improve the quality proposition of the medicines we offer also we are working closely with drap to enhance the sops and practices to serve the patient in a better and effective way i would like to appreciate the jordanian regulatory bodies to participate in this webinar and we are looking forward to working together with the jordanian government and regulatory bodies to promote pharma export between our countries which will prove to be productive and value adding collaboration once again thank you so much and i am sure that today's session will be a great learning experience for everyone especially the ppma members and will help us in the registration of products in jordan so we we'll, we look forward to see our products and our companies entering into jordanian market and thank you very much for you know this informative webinar thanks a lot thank you so much dokiran hassan for the informative uh, for the information about the pharmaceutical of pakistan now i would request the trade and investment attache uh, mr khadim ali who is at jordan to highlight the jordanian market about the exporters of pakistan uh, sana uh, i want to share my screen please Uh, bismillahir rahmanir rahim i will not take much of the time whether i would uh, like uh, that our source person dr husam has more time and more interaction with the participants uh, the objective of my part presentation are three number one uh, to convey the import potential of uh, pharma in uh, jordan second is its relevance with pakistan's export trend and a third objective would be uh, the justifications as to why pakistani pharmaceutical sector should target jordan in this slide the table shows that the import value of uh, pharma in jordan over the last 5 years has been quite stable it has been ranging from 542 million to 589 million it shows that uh, there has been a stability in the import of pharma products in jordan over the last 5 years while the uh, pie chart shows uh, that uh, the origin of pharma imports in jordan in 2019 has been quite diversified in 2019 jordan imported pharma products from more than 50 countries with germany being the largest origin with share of 15% usa 11% france 19% similarly other european countries had their due share even india had a share of 2.1% uh, the share of pakistan in this import value was very negligible this slide is about the composition of pharma import of uh, jordan as would be in the coin knowledge of participants that pharma products are traded against uh, hs chapter 30 that has uh, six headings so uh, this uh, pie chart shows that overall pharma import of jordan was concentrated in one heading that was 3004 that had a share of 77% while other headings had share but they were very negligible 
this slide is about the relevance of Jordan's pharma import trends with Pakistan's pharma export trends. On the uh, left side, the uh, pharma import of uh, Jordan, as I told earlier, uh, was uh, concentrated in, uh, in uh, one heading. 77% of Jordan's total pharma import was concentrated in heading 3004. While on the uh, right pie chart, we can see that 81% of Pakistan's pharma export was concentrated in the same heading. So uh, there is a, a very visible relevance between Jordan's pharma import and Pakistan's pharma export trends. Uh, these are a few of the justifications that I wanted to share with the pharmaceutical sector of Pakistan as to why they should target Jordan. First is compatibility of uh, Pakistan's export uh, uh, pharma trends with Jordan's pharma import, as uh, in the previous slide I have told. Second is that uh, overall, there has been stability in import value of pharma in Jordan. And third is uh, Jordan has been a growing market, both in terms of uh, indigenous population and refugees. And third is Jordan should not be taken as a single country. Rather, it is a gateway to its neighboring countries like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Palestine. And uh, fifth justification, I, I think, is that uh, Jordan is well integrated uh, with world's uh, pharma uh, market. Uh, Jordan does not import pharma only. It also exports. Its exports are greater than its imports. So if Pakistani pharmaceutical sectors uh, they enter into uh, Jordan, they would not only be exploring Jordan, they would be exploring its neighboring states and they would be in fact becoming part of global value chain of pharma. So Sana, that's uh, all from my side. Thank you so much, uh, Khadim, for briefing about the Jordan market, about the pharmaceutical exporters of Pakistan. Now I would request the focal person of, the, of today's session Dr. Hassam Ahmed Akuzahi, who is PhD in healthcare management. So I would request you to please highlight the importance of pharmaceutical registration in uh, Jordan. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that you are hearing my voice clearly. Yes, we do, sir. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, it's my great pleasure to attend this webinar in order to uh, uh, give an idea about the uh, process of registration of the pharmaceutical manufacturers and the products in Jordan. Knowing and referring to all the facts which has mentioned before, uh, Jordan considered to be a, a very good market for uh, Pakistani manufacturers. However, there is a certain uh, issues which we should take into consideration. Before I start, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, I'm driven by my emotion to support Pakistan since I consider Pakistan as my second homeland. I, did my, I get my first degree from Karachi University that was in 1982. Uh, so it's my pleasure to participate and to serve Pakistan. Uh, also, I'm the uh, president of the Pakistan Graduate uh, University Graduates Club in, in Jordan. Uh, allow me to uh, share my presentation, first of all. Uh, you can now. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether uh, you saw it or... Does it... Have it been shared or not? So you can share your screen. Yes. Is it shared? Not yet. Is it shared now? No, not yet.
when you are allowed from our side, if you can't share the screen, you can go ahead with your voice. We can hear it. Yeah, okay, but uh, can you uh, can you share it from your side? Um, Khadim, do you have that slide? Do you have that presentation? I send it to Mr. Khadim, yes. Khadim, can you please operate it? Okay, May, uh, I will operate. Can you share it, please? Yes. Uh, Dr. Sam, should I share? No. I'm trying to share it from here, share a screen, but uh, let me go to the PowerPoint, third view. Sir, Khadim can share the screen for you. You can go ahead with the presentation later on. Okay, can I go by the presentation without sharing? Yes, you may, if you can, if you feel easy for that. But we do need the presentation as well so that the exporters can also know about it. Yeah, so, okay, the presentation is already sent to you, but I don't know why what it's, the share, I'm not allowed to share because the share button is closed. Dr. Sam, no, Khadim already yeah, has shared it. Yeah, yes. it's shared, okay? Yes. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, uh, just this is two slides talking about our organization. We are uh, a drug store based in Amman and uh, um, having uh, um, uh, the, the activity of importing, distributing and marketing uh, pharmaceutical product in Jordan. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, next slide. This is uh, just some uh, introductory about uh, the companies which we are uh, presenting nowadays in Jordan. Please go to the first slide of the actual presentation. Yes. Uh, allow me here to give an idea about uh, some figures related to Jordan, economical data and health data. And this data is latest in uh, 2019. The population now in Jordan reached more than uh, 10.7 million US dollar, uh, a million inhabitants, and uh, 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 all every year there is an increase in the population due to the refugee and uh, the social style of the Jordanians. Our GDP per capita uh, is around uh, 4,300 US dollar. The inflation rate, exceptionally in, 19, in 2019, was 0.67, although the average of uh, inflation uh, rate between 2009 and 2018 was 4.3. And this inflation rate comes very low in uh, 2019 because of the COVID and the economical situation, which is worldwide are similar. Our currency is GOD and the exchange rate is fixed against US dollar, each US dollar equal to 0 0.708 JD. If we go to the pharmaceutical market, the total pharmaceutical market of Jordan is around 0 0.7 billion, 745 million US dollar. The private market size is almost about 50% with a total uh, 355 million US dollar while the tender is almost around 50%, the hospital is around 65 million. We have a total pharmacies of uh, 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 physicians of almost 8,600 physicians having their own private clinic working on the health uh, sector and more than uh, two, um, uh, uh, 2,850 pharmacies. We have in the private market around 42 uh, private hospitals, in addition to around 15 governmental hospitals. The total bid in the private market is more than 3,000 bid, and uh, additional around 2,000 bid in the uh, 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 government sector. Next slide, please. Now, 
Talking about the uh, drug registration, uh, we should highlight the uh, number of the committees for medicine and the pharmacies, the technical committee for registration of a new drug, the drug pricing committee, the committee for surname and uh, serums and vaccines, the committee for the infant milk formula, their special formula and supplementary food. So when we look to the uh, 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 JFDA as a skeleton, in terms of registration, there is a certain almost five committees. Each committee is concerned with the registration of some of the pharmaceutical and uh, 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 food supplements and medical devices. Next, please. There is a committee for pharmaceutical preparation, which contains vitamins and minerals, committee for medical herbal and neutral, uh, uh, nutritional uh, products, committee for medical equipment and supplies, including uh, uh, disinfectant and uh, uh, detergents, a committee for approving the manufacturing locations, and a committee for co uh, cosmetic preparation. Before going to the next slide, we should uh, look, uh, we should know that registration of uh, pharmaceutical preparation in Jordan goes, pharmaceutical, I mean medicines, goes in two parallel uh, lines. The first one, the uh, factory itself, the site of the production should be registered and accredited by the GFDA. If the site is accredited, then they will look to the uh, file of the, the dossier of the product. But if that site is not registered, nobody can uh, have product from that site registered in Jordan. Next slide, please. First step in registration is to classify our products. Here, if we are talking about medicines and the product is in the country of origin, origin uh, classified as a medicine, there is no need for classification. But if we are talking about a nutritional uh, pharmaceutical or uh, vitamins, minerals, medical devices, then classification is a must. And the classification goes in two, two steps. The first step, we uh, need to submit a, 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 a file uh, for uh, a quick classif classification in order to know whether it is vitamins or medical device. Then. After and the requirements for this primary classification is only the insert leaflet, the uh, uh, artwork of the product, and the composition certificate. Then, after the classifying of this, whether it is food supplements or herbal products or herbal, her herbal preparation or medicine, then the second step is to go for a full registration in which we need a full dossier. The timeline for a medicine registration is one to two years. However, it is lesser for the uh, uh, paramedical registration, uh, food supplements and medical devices. Next, please. Now, I mentioned that first of all, the site itself should be uh, registered. For the registration of the site, we have two ways. They are following two things. The first one, if the site is accredited by one of the reference listed countries, USA, EMEA, UK, Canada, Germany, Austria, Spain, Japan, Austria, France, Holland, Switzerland, Finland, Belgium, Sweden, then the inspection will be waived. Uh, JFDA will consider automatically that the site is accredited by JFDA and they will start studying the product dossier. But if the product, if the site is not registered in any of these, in two of these reference countries, then JFDA has to do their inspection. Let me talk a little bit about the inspection. What is the inspection? The inspection is something that uh, a team of JFDA has to visit the site and uh, uh, do all the uh, inspection as if you are doing internal inspection or auditing, they will do, taking into consideration that they will inspect everything, starting from your manufacturing process, 
uh, the people, the uh, training, the uh, uh, formulas, the flow of the uh, uh, production, everything. And uh, the team will consist two or three or sometimes four uh, professionally from the GFDA. This inspection goes for, um, depends upon uh, how many uh, production line. If you have one production line or four production line, that uh, each production line might take two days. And in this case, the manufacturer has to bear all the cost from their traveling from their home, Amman, till they come back to Amman again. The average cost of inspection uh, is almost between 15 to 20,000 US dollar. And it has to be paid in addition to uh, a site registration fees, which is almost 1,000 US dollar. Now, after the inspection completed, the committee will go back to Jordan and they will write their reports. Uh, in many cases, they find some uh, 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 points which need a correction. So they write to the manufacturer again, asking them to do their CABA and send their CABA to the JFDA along with the uh, pictures and documentation. If the committee consider that this CABA is acceptable, then they will register the site. In many other cases, they uh, ask to re-inspect after they receive the CABA to see on reality whether this has been done or no. Now, the issue here is the timeline from applying for the registration of the site, going through the inspection process, till the approval, it might take two to three years. That depends upon how many manufacturers are online. So they give priority sometimes if the manufacturer has a certain products which is needed in Jordan. Other than this, you have to be in the queue and wait for the time. Of course, lobbying makes it a little bit easy to go and uh, in, in, in some cases, uh, I mean, we arrange, we have an experience that we uh, uh, did the inspection in uh, 18 months. Now, after the registration of the site, then you they will start look to your dossier and the registration of the dossier also have its own process. Nowadays, they consider that the ECTD is the base. They do not accept any file unless it is ECTD format. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, uh, based on what we call law number 80, accreditation, uh, as I mentioned, we have to apply for, you have to apply for your application file. And with the application form, you should have uh, uh, the master, the site master file. In the master file, also we need the GMP certificate, manufacturing licensing certificate, letter of appointment and uh, to a drug store uh, in Jordan, because you cannot apply for the site registration, unless you have appointed somebody in Jordan to uh, work as your distributor or important. So you have to give a letter of appointment to any drugstore registered in Jordan. That drugstore has to show his documentation that he's allowed to register and to import and to distribute those products. The speed of the registration depend on receiving of a complete ECTD format. You know, now uh, all the products considered to be Me Too products or generic products. So uh, there is a lot of uh, and plenty of uh, competitors, especially nowadays, the market start uh, registering products from India, from Turkey, from other uh, uh, markets. So uh, the, the, as much as you are fast in preparing your ECTD, uh, your dossier in an ECTD format, the, the fastest way to get uh, your product registered in Georgia. Next, please. 
The contents of any must file, uh, master file should be, uh, first of all, a general information about the manufacturer, a quality management system of the manufacturer, the personnel, including training and including uh, their qualifications, uh, premises and equipment, the uh, drawing for the uh, manufacturing site in terms of administrative premises and the uh, equipment list uh, showing each machine and what to do and the origin of that machine. The full documentation, including the uh, SOPs of uh, your product, some hints about the production lines, how many production lines you have, semi-solid, solid, parenteral, solid, uh, uh, IV, IM, and the quality, your quality control system and your distribution compliant products effects and recall. If you, you should have your own recall system accredited. And uh, if you have done a self inspection uh, previously, you have to include in your uh, master file. And this is the base where they will start looking to your manufacturing site. Next, please. Now, drug dossier. The dossier should be submitted in ECTD format. And nowadays, everything goes in with GFDA electronically. We cannot carry the dossier and send it to GFDA. We have to upload it uh, uh, through a certain accounts to their uh, website and servers, and it should be in terms of ECTD format. I know that it is a little bit costly. I'm not sure whether this is implemented in Pakistan so far or not, but this is a precondition where you cannot submit your dossier unless it is in such format. Now you need with the dossier also, you legalized GMB and manufacturing license to be submitted with the dossier, you legalized price certificate. And the price certificate uh, should con uh, consist the following. Please, next. Uh, I will talk about the price certificate, but also, you have to submit with the dossier free sale certificate issued by official, official competent party in the country. The aim here that no product can be registered unless this product is marketed and freely sold in the country of origin. Next slide, please. Elements of price certificate. The price certificate should be attested from your chamber of commerce or any uh, identical uh, uh, party. Uh, it should consist that your X price in the country of X factory price in the country of origin, in the currency of the country, in the rupees, I mean, Pakistani rupees. The public price in, in Pakistan uh, in uh, rupees, the requested price to be registered in Jordan in US dollars or any other uh, similar currency, uh, but we prefer always in, in Jordan because of the stability, there is no fluctuation rate. So we, we always request the uh, price, uh, uh, requested price in US dollar and it should be CIF. If the product is registered in any of the reference country, the price to be mentioned. Saudi Arabia, as an example, considered to be reference for pricing. So if you are registering, if this product is registered in Saudi Arabia, you have to mention also in your price certificate the uh, export price to Saudi in US dollar. If the product is not registered in KSA, this should, mean, this should be mentioned clearly upon the registration that uh, our product is not marketing in Saudi Arabia. Next, please. For pricing, there is two rules. Rule number one, they take the public price, CIF, uh, cost price equal, the public price, your public price uh, uh, in Jordan, uh, uh, CIF should be uh, your cost price according to the manufacturing side plus taxes of export plus insurance plus release of fair, uh, uh, fees. 
the plus pharmacy or uh, store profile. Let me explain this. As an example, if you are selling a product CIF to Jordan at one, uh, $2 as an example, this $2 will be considered as the cost on the distributor here in Jordan. They gave a margin of almost markup 19%, which including clearance, insurance, uh, taxes of export. Then they gave a pharmacy margin, which is almost uh, uh, 27%, to come up with the public price in Jordan. Now, there is a formula, there is a condition that you cannot sell any product in Jordan to the public with a higher price than the public price in Pakistan minus all the expense, the factor, the markup. And I will stop here a little bit to clarify something. One of the issues, uh, uh, critical issues, which you should face and you might face that uh, when you will ask for an export price, they will come back to your public price in your country of origin. So first of all, uh, uh, some countries, uh, I think like India, nowadays their authority uh, gave them a price certificate with a public price higher than what they are selling in, in reality. But also there is a risk of inspection bit, uh, from the JFDA to your public prices. And you should take it into consideration. As an example, if you have a product sold with, in Pakistan with 200 rupees, as an example, or 300 rupees, there is no way to export this product to Jordan because they will give you a, a, a similar public price in Jordan to the public price of Pakistan. The, and this is one of the critical issues. Next is a slide, please. Rule number two is the public price where I just mentioned that public price in country of origin minus tax fees in country of origin if found plus profit of pharmaceutical stores plus export expense plus tax fees plus banking insurance plus pharmacy. So they will compare the final public price in Jordan after adding, after removing all these expenses to the public price in Karachi in Pakistan. Next, please. Now, during registration price wise, the least price for any originator product that is conducted from either process, rule number one or rule number two, then they, they will take it first of all, then the median price of the public price in one of the following countries. If you are an originator, this applies for the originators not for the generic, not for the need to products. If you have a, 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 you are a originator for a product, then they will take the median price of those reference country. As an example, if you are having originator product and you are uh, requesting uh, $50 for that, they will take the median price of the similar product registered in these countries to come up with your export the price accordingly. Next, please. The price conducted from export price to the Saudi market, this is a must. If you are selling to Saudi market, you cannot sell to Jordan more than that price. Why? Because, you know, Saudi, uh, in, in terms of uh, 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 scale of production and the scale of mar scaling, uh, it is much, much biggest market than Jordan. So if you are selling to Saudi Arabia with the uh, uh, special prices, Jordan insists to have these special prices, which is implemented in Saudi. So an advice, when you are registering in Saudi, keep in mind that the whole Middle East, whether it is Gulf area, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq is looking for your price in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Next, please. The least price 
for generic product that is conducted from either implementing the rule number one or the public price rule number two or the price conducted from export to Saudi Arabia, they will consider it to be your price for Jordan. The product price must not exceed, as an example, if you have levofloxacin now coming from Pakistan, uh, the highest price you can get is not exceeding 80% of the originator, which is Tavanic for Sanofi. As an example, if Tavanic for Sanofi uh, uh, sold in Jordan at 10 JD, then your maximum price implementing the rules below, before mentioned before, should not exceed 80% of the 10 JD. So they give privilege to the originator 20% above any generic. If you are the second generic or the third generic, you might get the price of the first generic or 5% each time. As an example, if before you there is 10 generics, you might lose from the 80% another 20% because you are coming late and the market is flooded. So usually there is a privilege to the first generic. First generic comes, come, who comes first, who can get the better price. Of course, implementing the rules with no, I mean, we, we, they cannot ignore uh, the rules which I talk about. Next, please. Please note that while the generic products are marketed, JFDA has the right to decrease the price based on the following cases. As an example, you know, uh, some generics are in the market and the originator also in the market. I will give you an example of something which happened with uh, Amaril, uh, uh, Amaril, which is uh, uh, a glimepride. The, uh, when Amaril comes into the market by Aventis, uh, it has a very high price, almost $10 for the two milligram. Then after the data protection expire, uh, many generics come into the market and they get also good prices, 80% of the originator. So what uh, Aventis did, they reduce their Amaril price in Germany to the uh, by 50%. So the generic products in Jordan becomes more in a price than the originator. So JFDA uh, used their rights to decrease the generic and they decreased the generic by the same percentage the originator decreased his price. So this should be kept in mind that JFDA has the right to decrease the price based on First of all, if the price on the originator has been decreased, if the generic concern, the product has been decreased in the country of origin, uh, if the generic concern, the product price has been decreased in Saudi Arabia. Next, please. Am I going fast or that's okay? No, sir, you are fine. Go with your speed. Okay, now for the medical device registration, there is a certain uh, procedures. Registering medical device usually takes three months from applying data. After the finalizing of primary and secondary classification to make sure that this is a medical device. The CMARC certificate, European Confirm uh, Conformity, the origin of uh, a notarized copy, if from the health authority is needed. Or FDA certificate that if the origin notarized copy from a health authority containing the manufacturing site. Next, please. In case there uh, are no CE or FDA certificate to provide, uh, FSA free sale certificate uh, the origin or neutralized copy 
from health authority in one of the following countries. As an example, if any manufacturer in Pakistan have a medical device, uh, but does not have a CE or FDA approval, the, but he are selling to Japan or Norway or Canada or Austria or Switzerland, in this case, uh, an authorized copy of the health authority of one of those country which will take, uh, uh, will be considered uh, instead of the CE or FDA. If none of the PRISA certificate is available, provide a free sale certificate from the health authority of country of origin, which means uh, 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 registering medical devices much easier than uh, 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 medicine, of course. Next, please. Other requirements for medical device, certificate of composition, mentioning composition, and the stamp of and signed of the manufacturer. Finished product specification, a declaration from the manufacturer of uh, to mention the shelf life and the storage condition, the normal uh, things which has to be printed on the outer back, certificate of anal analysis containing batch number, production expiry date, and manufacturing date. Next, please. Methods of analyzing for active ingredients. Uh, of course, they, 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 they analyze everything here in Jordan, whether it is medicine, medical devices, uh, food supplements, everything is go through the JFDA lab analysis. A declaration, what, what we need, we need declaration from the manufacturer that the product does not include any animal products and free of BSC, a stability study for one batch, samples, artwork for outer and inner bags, leaflet if available, uh, catalogs, brochures, and method of use. Next, please. Now, registration uh, requirements for food or special food or dietary supplements uh, products. Uh, food definition, they classify anything uh, taking orally uh, and uh, consists of natural uh, preparation as a food supplement. Uh, now, uh, but uh, uh, herbal or herbal uh, excretion of uh, amino acids or enzymes or organ organic tissues or a gland of metabolic substance. Uh, there is what we uh, have a class for a special food, a nutrient defin uh, de uh, definition. I mean, a special food, uh, uh, there is for kids, there is for uh, elderly, there is a certain special food for a sports uh, and uh, a sportsmen. Any nutrient uh, prepared in introducing to achieve special nutritional requirements can be considered and uh, classified as a special food. Next, please. Dietary supplement definition, uh, you know it better than me. How to register? The manufacturer should, first of all, appoint any drug store, Ru'ya uh, or any drug store, uh, to be uh, uh, his representative and to apply for the registration. Now, duly legalized means that this agency declaration should be legalized from the manufacturer, Chamber of Commerce, Notary Public, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Jordan Embassy. In case there is no Jordanian Embassy, you can legalize it from any Jordan Embassy in the nearest country to your country. Why they are making this? Because now, if you are, when you are appointing somebody to be your representative in Jordan there, JFDA is not ready to contact the manufacturer directly. They have to contact the one who is responsible fully about the product and what the product can do in the future. So this is something which uh, 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 given to the JFDA along with the dossier. Next, please. You need to send a free sale certificate issued by the local health uh, or competent authority in the country of origin in which it declared that 
first of all, the product should be freely sold in the uh, and consumed in the country of origin. A product name and the brand name should be mentioned. Name of backing or manufacturing company, packaging and or manufacturing company. The main ingredients of the product. And finally, that the manufacturer company is licensed for the manufacturing and the producing such product. Here we are talking about the food supplement or medical devices, of course. Next, please. Also, it should contain that the product is uh, compliance with its standard and can be used safely. And the product is used and sold in the country of origin as food dietary supplement. I yani mean, they will look to the product, what was the classification of this product in its country of origin. Uh, there is an important note that this free sale certificate must be legalized from Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Jordan Embassy in the country of origin, and must be issued by the health authority. Next, please. Original copies of certificate of analysis for the finished product issued by the manufacturing company, COA, in which the ingredient and nutritional fact are stated. We need a certificate of analysis, original samples of the product, English packaging material, original copy of the product label and outer box in English, which uh, here uh, in Jordan, they allow two languages. English is one uh, of, of, of them. It's a must. Next, please. Uh, also, uh, you have to accompany with uh, your dossier some published uh, scientific studies in medical journal that support the claims written on the label. We are talking about food supplements and medical devices. Later to declare the name and the address of the marketing authorization holder plus the name and the address of the marketing manufacturing company. One original copy of the composition certificate for both active and inactive ingredient. Here, I, I want to mention something which is very important. For parenteral preparation medicines, if you having a copy, then the expedient, it is not only the active ingredient, the active ingredient and the expedients should be similar to the originator. If you change in any expedients, your dossier will not be accepted. Next, please. We need, uh, you have to send a declaration letter from the manufacturer and company to declare product shelf life, product storage conditions, product stability, and uh, uh, guarantee the stability and the efficacy of product. Next, please. Now, finished product analysis certificate and method of analysis should also be sent with the dossier and revised if there is any revision, the revision date. A product general information, the packaging material, outer box and label must contain the following. The product name, patch number, manufacturing date, expiry date, country of origin, storage condition, and the barcode. Next, please. Declaration certificate to declare that the product is a freely, uh, a free from uh, uh, hormones and uh, simulant of uh, animator substance and to be legalized from the authority that control food and dietary supplement in your country. Registration fees to be paid. All the registration document must be in English. Next, please. Now, Cosmetic products is uh, almost similar to the uh, uh, food supplement and medical device application for certificate of composition, certificate of analysis, uh, surname and amine acid and BSE certificate free 
uh, concentration of having metal for uh, lipstick, uh, uh, mask hair, and eyeshadow. Next, please. A preservative, collagen, last for creams, lotion. If, if your product uh, consists of any, you have to declare this declaration for uh, a free of substance to uh, talic containing products, concentration of <coughs> botanins of cotton containing products, layout for inner and outer back, registration fees to be paid and sample. As you can see, the registration of pharmaceutical cosmetics or cosmetics food supplements is much easier than the medicine. Next, please. Uh, this is the similar requirements which needed for food supplement in the composition application form certificate of composition. It's the same. Next, please. <coughs> this is duplicated. Next. They are duplicated. Uh, this is the end of uh, the presentation for this. Uh, just before uh, we finished uh, to highlight in one thing, Jordan is a very good market for the Pakistani. Why I'm saying this? Because uh, many Indian products nowadays, they are uh, in the Jordan market. I will give you something I said before that I have a special emotion towards Pakistan. Uh, but let me be very frank. Yesterday, I won a tender for Metronidazole. Uh, if I'm presenting a company from India, the uh, total number in terms of units was more than half million bottle metronidazole. It's 571,000 bottle of metronidazole in one tender for MOH. I, I think I talked to several partners in Pakistan. The problem that they are uh, telling me always that we are satisfied with our local market. Now I think it's the time to think of the export. Why Jordan is important to the Pakistani manufacturers? Because if you are registered in Jordan, easily you can go to Saudi Arabia, to Gulf, and to Iraq. Iraq is a very huge market. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. This was quite impressive and uh, very much informative presentation and I hope that all the exporters will avail the opportunity to get entrance in Jordan market with the help of the documentation which you already have mentioned in your presentation and it's very really glad to know as well that you are you are the student of KU as well. Thank you so much Thank sir. You. Now I would request Mr. Obadullah who is the director of registration of Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan to say a few words about the procedures which we have adopted in Pakistan. Uh, Dr. Obadullah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you please speak a bit louder? Actually, we have to let He is uh, just out of the office for a few minutes. Actually, he was set there for 4.10. So in the meanwhile, if some other presenter may go for the presentation and we do the presentation after that, is it okay for you people? We do not have uh, any other speakers uh, because Asim Rav saw the last one speaker. We do have. If, if you go some... Just wait for a minute only, wait for a minute only. Okay. He's here. He's here. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Thank you very much. It's Dr. Ubedullah, Director of Registration, Brad here. Uh, in fact, I have been assigned to collaborate and uh, to share draft status uh, regarding the registration. We have gone through all the presentation of our learned fellow from the Jordan. And uh, truly speaking, we are really delighted that our brother country, Jordan, is in, uh, very much 
compliance through the international regulatory mechanism and most of the uh, scenarios which Jordan is following is already aligned with the developed countries and probably that is the reason that uh, uh, Jordan is exporting a lot to the developed world as well. As well as Pakistan is concerned, uh, our regulatory authority uh, has emerged in 2012 and since then we are following the international path for the uh, uh, international accreditation and we are in the arena of the global regulation as well. Right now we have qualified uh, WHO uh, second audit and now we are uh, at the phase of uh, rather WHO listed authority accreditation. Our first audit has been conducted and right now uh, we are expecting second audit of the WHO in uh, March or April probably and we have already shared our GBT tool which is global benchmarking tool and uh, we do hope that after this audit we will be in position to have the accreditation of WHO as our level 3 uh, and uh, that uh, we will be in the arena of the global regulation as well. And why I am sharing all these things because uh, our fellow from the Jordan has shared that uh, after the accreditation from the uh, stringent regulatory authority that the process of the registration will be easy and by and large we are in the phase of that we have adopted CTD uh, common technical document registration application as well now it was all brief introduction and uh, now over to the our brief uh, presentation which we want to share with our the Jordanian fellows the DRAP is an autonomous body and we are based at Islamabad. Our provincial headquarters have also field offices which by and large look after the GMP audit of our provincial chapter. Uh, our central drug laboratory is in the Karachi and um, it's very pleasure to share with you that our CDL will be accredited inshallah in January. Uh, WHO team is coming to the Pakistan and they will audit our laboratory. At the same time, we have our national control laboratory for the biological, which grants a lot release certificate for all the products that comes to the Pakistan for the sale for the biological control release. And uh, our the, uh, last one is our another laboratory, which is specifically designed and built for the surveillance uh, as a surveillance laboratory with the aim to have post-marketing surveillance of all the products in the market. So it's our structure of the draft by and large. And we can see next slide, that after the, uh, after the amend, uh, enactment of draft in 2012, our tenants has been extended from drugs to therapeutic goods. As already shared by our learned fellow from the Jordan, that they also take care of some vitamins preparation and other. Same is the case here that right now, we uh, regulate allopathic drugs, biological, medical devices, alternate medicine and health products and medicated cosmetics. Uh, right now pharmaceuticals come under the allopathic, same is the biological and the vitamin preparations come under the alternate medicine and health products which cover all the nutritional and other supplements as well. And we grant the enlistment to all these products. For the CTD, for the allopathic and biological drugs, we follow the common technical document as done by other regulatory authorities of the world as well. And as far as GMP compliance is concerned, right now we have become the uh, candidate for the six GMP certification system uh, as a regulatory authority. Uh, our, our schedule for the GMP audit is very much stringent and we want to get the six certification uh, for the draft so that we can, uh, we will be the, in the arena of the uh, regulatory authorities which are the fixed qualified. At the same time, very important component is the pharmacovigilance, which most of the regulatory authorities are also following. Now we are the full member of the Uppsala Monetary Center and we are in the collaboration with the UMC, um, the UMC which is collaborating with us. We have National Pharmacovigilance Center as well, where we receive the uh, ADR reports of, of our country as well. Similarly, uh, we have provincial chapters for the uh, National Fund Vigilance Center. And being a regulatory authority, we know that it's very important that after pharmaco vigilance, one can, uh, uh, importing country can trust our product as well. So, by and large, for allopathic drugs and biological, 
we follow the same pattern as done by other regulatory authority of the world, especially stringent, that we accept the common technical document. Second, we audit the facility on the basis of the fixed certification procedure. And third one, it is the um, it is the fund vigilance system which we follow and we we we, we follow the uh, UMC. We are the member of the UMC as well. Now, if we see it is our statutory structure that in draft we have 13 divisions, and you can see, and you can see that uh, the uh, the technical division, pharmaceutical evaluation, registration, licensing, and quality assurance, it is the relevant division which performs all the functions for the export of any product from the Pakistan. Evaluation and registration uh, registered the product. Licensing grant the drug manufacturing license and QA grant the GMP certificate. And I believe that these are the three prerequisites for the export of product to any country. And by and large, we follow and uh, we follow all these procedure, which is the prerequisite for the Jordanian FDA as well. Next slide. Next slide. Now it is a uh, little bit about the uh, our portfolios which we perform. Clinical trial approval by the pharmacy services division. Now clinical trials are being approved and uh, specifically it is in the scenario of the COVID, it is a very typical example that Pakistan, it is in the focus of the uh, global regulatory arena that uh, Pakistan, it is one of the multi-center trial center for the Sinovac, uh, uh, Sinopharm uh, COVID vaccine, similar can Sino, and third one clinical trial. We are in the phase of that, and uh, uh, and we also con uh, conduct the clinical trial for the phase one to phase three for all the. And some of the trials have also been registered in the clinical site registry as well. Similarly, we grant the registration for the allopathic drugs and enlistment for the alternate and me medical devices nutritional products also comes under the domain of the, uh, the this one alternate medicine as shared by our jordanian fellow similarly our registration of the drug is a stringent process and takes some time and enlistment is a little bit uh, easier procedure because here we follow the uh, uh, rules which which are the most regulatory authorities of the world are following and that is not as such as stringent which is required. Similarly, licensing of the pharmaceutical manufacturing and alternate medical, uh, alternate medicines, nutritional and medical device manufacturing facilities, every manufacturing facility, ev or rather every establishment which we deal with any manufacturing of the therapeutic good is supposed to have the drug manufacturing license or relevant, relevant license from the draft. So, and, and it's not only the license. License means all the facilities starting from the site verification of the unit, its layout approval, and all the relevant quality control and manufacturing and quality assurance facilities. Similarly, personnel available. Availability is very of prime importance when we grant when we grant any license. So all our our uh, all our uh, establishments are duly licensed for a while. About 630 pharmaceutical units are manufacturing in Pakistan uh, for the drugs and medicines. And for alternate medicine, it's also about 700 pharmaceutical units. In medical device, we mostly rely on the import base. But a few medical devices right now we are in the field. Uh, manufacturing concerns are there, which, in, which includes cannula, catheter. And uh, very importantly, Pakistan. Uh, one of the city in the Pakistan Seal Court, that is the hub for the manufacturing of the surgical devices. And I'm pleased to share with you that the, this um, uh, surgical devices are being exported to various uh, countries of the world, including to Europe and America as well. And most of the operation theater items are being used uh, in the worldwide, uh, in, uh, are, uh, being, are being manufactured in Pakistan. So these are all about the establishment. Then comes the CGMP inspections. Every licensed unit is mandated to inspect it, to be inspected by the draft twice a year. And on the basis of that, GMP certificate is issued. And uh, it's important that this, uh, the, we are following now, we are uh, PICS GMP criteria for the grant of that. 
and we are now candidate for the PEGS certification as well as a regulatory authority. And uh, it was supposed to that PEGS uh, come and certify us in this December this year, but unfortunately due to COVID, they have, uh, uh, they have deferred our inspection, but we do hope that in future, we soon after the COVID situation as resolves, we will be inspected by the PICS for our certification. Then, then for me, vigilance activities, I have already shared that we are the member of Epsilon Monterey Center with our national and provincial pharmacovigilance center as well. Next slide. Now it is the strategic framework which our which DRAP has followed. That now we have developed our regulations. Next one is the harmonization. We are in the we have a shortlisted 19 regulatory authorities, and we are very very much cognizant of the harmonization, regulatory harmonization with the international world. Next one is the automation, and this automation is very much important for us. And the last 10 days before, we have launched Pakistan Integrated Regulatory Information Management System, by which we all our information of the licensing, uh, registration, GMP, and lab testing will be automated and available on the dashboard. Similarly, enforcement is also very important, and our way forward is only one that to put our country on the uh, put on the country in general and drug regulatory authority of pakistan in specific in the global arena so that we can be uh, we can be declared as the world listed authority by the who in a one year time meaning there by 2021 so it's about the uh, regulation which I, I already shared in the best interest of time i will skip few slides Yes, it is the internalization, uh, international harmonization that is uh, WHO. We are at maturity level two in the 2021, we will be level three. We are now applicant, rather we have got the applicant status of PICS. We have adopted CTD implementation, uh, uh, which our Jordanian fellow has also shared that it is their requirement. 2D barcode is one of the tool which can track, track and trace our products. Uh, we have already adopted WHO collaborative registration procedure, and now we are signatory of CRP. We are a full member of UMC. We are the full member of AHWP, Asian Harmonization Working Party for Medical Devices. And three, uh, it, it, for our Jardinian fellow, it's important to share that our three of the laboratories in uh, of the laboratories in public sector are WHO pre-qualified. So I we assure you. The, all the products which will you will get from Pakistan, these will be WHO pre tested by the WHO pre qualified lab, and we can trust. Now it is our automation system. Uh, a, a brief that we have launched Pyrems integrated regulatory information track and trace team software. That is a track evolution and uh, and monitoring. All import export is being looked after by this software. NEML mobile app and VGFlow database for ADR. That was a prerequisite for the UMC. On the basis of this VGFlow, uh, WHO has uh, declared as full member to the draft for the UMC as well. Next slide. Now it is the registration procedure that I have already shared with you that we follow the CTD protocols for the drugs and biologicals. Next slide. Now, uh, these are the divisions which uh, involve in the registration process, evaluation, registration, biological licensing for the drug manufacturing license, QA division, look after GMP, CDL, test our product, and inshallah, our CDL lab will be the WHO pre-qualified by the first quarter of 2021. The, similarly, export registrations are being granted on a very speed basis uh, in about one month time after all the uh, prerequisites are complete. And uh, it's the choice of the company, importing country, by which name they want to do it, by the generic version or the by the brand name. We are open and we are very much uh, 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 we are very much cognizant that every country has its own branding system. So we follow both generic and uh, brand name system, whichever the country will like to uh, import. Uh, we have specifically for export purpose, we have established export facilitation desk, and it is only for the exporters of the therapeutic goods. And uh, uh, in line with the vision of our government, we have uh, if, since last one year, 
there is a very speedy priority disposal of all the works like certificate of pharmaceutical product registration for the export purpose and gmp certificates and uh, our ceo personally looks out of this facilitation desk and uh, all these facility all these um, informations are being provided to the importing country for in the best interest of our country and importer as well now it is very simplified that we have simplified our procedure for the <coughs> export registration application and then a, a, a very limited a very meager amount of fees and then gmp dml dosage form and export purchase order if it is available then we grant the registration into uh, to the applicant in 15 to 20 days time now it's very important in fact uh, as our jordanian fellow has also shared that they have uh, they have uh, outlined some of the re regulatory authorities on the same pattern and on the recommendation of the world health organization we also follow the reliance mechanism and by this reliance mechanism we have declared some authorities as the reference regulatory authorities these are the 19 authorities which are the reference regulatory authority you can see from serial number 1 to serial number 19 these are the reference regulatory authorities and and last to 20 and 21 these are the organizations like the who and european medicine agency so it is basically that all those formulations we rely on the concept of the reliance and on if any formulation which is being approved by this one for the safety purpose and efficacy we only grant registration to uh, only to these regulatory authority products approved so it was all about the drug drug regulatory authority that the procedure for the registration and all the things and we totally believe that uh, definitely uh, uh, that drug follow only and only safety efficacy and quality parameters as is being done by the pharmaceutical uh, regulatory scenario of the whole world and very important is that our now pharmaceutical industry is about 630 units in the pakistan and now we are on the track in which most some of the our national regulatory national industry has been accredited by the uh, stringent regulatory authority of the world similarly some of our product have been pre qualified if you check the udra gmp uh, european union drug regulatory authority gmp database you can find that some countries have been pre qualified uh, by the european countries for the pakistan as well and the procedure which we follow mostly is the same procedure for the grant of registration which is being followed by the uh, developed world like we we accept the common technical document ctd we grant the gmp certificate on the criteria which is being by the pics and third one and the most important that national farm in national farm co vigilance center uh, we uh, we always get the data from the uh, our manufacturers and hospitals about the adverse drug reactions which are being reported to pakistan and at the same time these adrs we report to the uh, upsala monitoring center jord uh, upsala monitoring center uh, who umc on the basis of our performance for these for co vigilance they have declared and they have upgraded us from the uh, associate member to the member in 2019 and now uh, we are uh, in the phase of automation as well although we have started the process and this in automation is the integrated regulatory information management system for all our licenses good manufacturing practice certificates registration and adr and quality control database we assure you that all the products which the jordan government definitely want to have pakistan as far as draft facilitation is concerned we are very much uh, prone to facilitate all our exporters and brother countries who want to import from pakistan and if any if jordanian fda want any any confirmation from the regulatory authority they can contact us on our webs on our official ids and we will facilitate and respond to those queries in minimum possible time thank you very much thank you so much vadula sir for briefing us about the drug regulatory authority of pakistan's role in pharmaceutical and promoting that product to different countries after this presentation i would now start the um, session of the question and answer so that if any exporter has to ask any question to dr hasam or khadim ali 
he or she can definitely do it. Does anybody have any question about the session or any other question related to the Jordan market? If someone wants to ask a question, then please open your mic and ask the question to Dr. Hassam or Khadim Ali Sahab. Uh, uh, I want to ask one question to Dr. Hassam, if you allow me. Please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Muzaffar Sayyid and I am a general manager export in Bosch Pharmaceuticals. And first of all, I would like to appreciate your effort to arrange this webinar and the good presentation being given by all the participants. Uh, as one of the prerequisites for the registration of pharmaceutical products in Jordan is to appoint a distributor in Jordan. So, we have aware of the uh, company of Dr. Hussam, but uh, apart from this, uh, I would appreciate if we can get the list of uh, all the distributors in Jordan, and this list could be given to PPM and we can have access to that list so that we can approach uh, to the distributor to initiate the process of registration. This is my question. Dr. Hassan, can you please open your mic and responsive? Yeah, uh, I appreciate this question. This is a good question from Mr. Mugaffar. First of all, when I mentioned uh, uh, my drugstore name, it's not just to, to tell you that I'm ready to uh, be your distributor, just to uh, mention my address. If you need any uh, further clarification, you can contact me. Uh, regarding the list, yes, you are right. There is a list of the distributors whom registered in the uh, Ministry of Health and Ministry of Trade. I think the, uh, the, uh, the commercial attaché in the, the embassy is in contact with me. I can uh, give him this list and he can share it with you, uh, Mr. Kadimi. I can share, he can share it with, uh, your particip with all participants later. Thank you very much. Yes. Does anybody have another question? Um, uh, hello. Please go ahead. Hello, this is uh, Zahra Bhatt from Ferocens Laboratories Limited. I manage the regulatory affairs over there. Uh, I have uh, two questions. First one is that, uh, please, uh, can you uh, um, uh, little elaborate the point uh, that we have to prepare a ECTD dossier. Actually, for ECT dossier, as per my knowledge, we have to upload that on the web. But for the Pakistan, uh, till now, I have not been aware about that, that uh, some countries um, by itself upload the dossier on the web. So we have to prepare the CTD dossier format, and then the distributor will be uploaded the same at their website on behalf of our company. Am I right? Yes. Uh, first of all, the dossier should be definitely uh, loaded, uploaded from your side in the format of uh, ECTD. Then uh, we will take it as it is and we submitted it to the JFDA site uh, through our account. Each drugstore here in Jordan has a direct account with the JFDA with a password and uh, a username. So what you upload in your uh, uh, site, we will take it as it is, and we upload it here into the uh, JFDA site. Okay, in that case, I think we have um, some. We have to um, be for, following some of the special requirement that the PDF file size should be of this or almost uh, five MBs or not more than five MBs. Uh, do you have the? Can, um, I will be very um, yeah. appreciate that if you could share that requirement with PPMA or some some uh, participants so we can get that from here. Yes, I will, uh, I will ask my regulatory department to arrange a, a certain uh, index for uploading this ECTD file uh, uh, to the JFDA, uh, starting from the process which should be start at your end. 
and uh, also I can share it with Mr. I can share it with Mr. Kadimi, and he can share it with you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Well, uh, it's it's Dr. Obedullah. I want to. I I have one question. Uh, in fact, what type of help do you need from the regulatory authority? Like DREP, uh, Drug Regulatory Authority Pakistan definitely want to help every country. So what type of regulatory help would you like to have from we people so that our countries, our companies, national companies can export to other part of the world easily? Sorry, uh, could you please repeat that the voice was not, is the question for me, first of all? <clears throat> yes, definitely, for the, from the Jordanian fellow. That yes. Which type of help you would like to have the from the DRAP? Like company profile, like the GMP certification, or registration accreditation, or the laboratory testing reports? Which type of help you want to have from we people? You know, uh, I'm not an official guy of the JFDA. I am. Uh, 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 in, uh, I belong to the private market. But usually, all the documentation, mo most of the documents required and the certificates, uh, I think you can help your people in order to prepare it uh, as uh, uh, to go online with the requirement of the JFDA. But uh, this question, if you want, I can address this question on your behalf to our uh, uh, um, official people in GFDA so they can uh, give me some hints if they need, uh, especially if you can share with me your presentation, which is for me very valuable. I can discuss it with my colleagues in the GFDA in order to see how they can benefit from your organization in Pakistan. Surely, we will share our presentation with our fellow in the TDAP and they will then definitely forward you. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anybody have another question? Sir, sir I have a more question over here. Please, yes. it's Zahra. Uh, uh, actually, uh, in your almost third or fourth uh, slide, it was mentioned that we have uh, our US or EMA or Canada, Australia, CPP available with us for the further submission. But if we have no, uh, no availability of uh, COPP for these some of these countries like Australia, Austria, and some other, what will be the solution for this? Should we have to submit our country of origin, COPP and FSC? That will be um, okay to your company or country? Uh, yes, good question. If we are talking about medicine, I said, no, uh, they cannot look even to your dossier of any product unless your site is accredited and registered. Now, if your site has a CPP from two uh, 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 countries of the reference country, then they only, they, your, your site will be automatically registered in Jordan. Only you have to pay the fees, which is almost 1,000 US dollar for the site registration. But if your site does not have any CPP in the two of the reference country you mentioned, then inspection is a must. And here, you have to apply for the site registration. You get uh, an appointment of inspection and the team should go to Pakistan at your cost in order to inspect your site. If we are talking about uh, medical devices, our food supplements, uh, inspection is not uh, necessary. Uh, uh, if you don't have those uh, free sale certificate from those countries, they will consider the free sale certificate of your country. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I have one question. Yes, I have one question. Uh, my name is Mavish. I'm a regulatory affairs manager in Sante Private Limited. As you uh, managed, clearly mentioned it, there is no site inspection for class one medical device also. We just need to provide the manufacturer details. Is it, uh, is this uh, suffice your requirement and we can apply for the registration in Jordan? Uh, yes, definitely, yes. As far as it is classified as medical device, whether it's class uh, M1 or M2, you don't have to be inspected. All, all you have to do is to submit your dossier along with the free sale certificate in the country of origin. If you have C uh, uh, E marks, uh, that would be uh, agreed, even for marketing purposes. Okay, this is for class one, class two, both. Yeah, yeah. 
as Thank far as it is classified as a medical device. Thank you so much. Thank you. The only inspection is just for medicine. Any other question, please? I hope everyone is clear now. Uh, Khadim, one question is for you uh, about the draft. That uh, can we have an MOU signed with the draft and the ED EFDA? Uh, hi, I had a meeting with JFD uh, last week. So, uh, and uh, that meeting was the first of its kind. And hopefully I would have two or three meetings in next three to four month, uh, weeks. I would inshallah take up this matter with JFDA and would try to uh, get an MOU signed between DRAP and JFDA. Uh, for the time being, for, I will send you the presentation of DRAP with you so, can, so that you can share with the JFDA. For their uh, further references. Thank you. Now I would request Mr. Ali Nawaz Jana, who is the Section Officer Middle East at Ministry of Commerce, to please proceed, uh, proceed and give the concluding remarks on the session. Ali Nawaz, can you please hear me? Ali Nawaz, can you hear us? I think he is no more in the session. Uh, so, Khadim, can you please have a concluding remarks on the session of the webinar? Yeah. Uh, I, this embassy and uh, our Trade Development Authority of Pakistan are very thankful to Mr. Hussan for sparing us some precious moments of his life. Hopefully, uh, his presentation, his uh, words would have added to the uh, knowledge of uh, Pakistan's pharmaceutical uh, stakeholders. And hopefully, uh, they would consider Jordan as one of the potential export destinations of pharmaceutical products. And uh, for the participants, uh, Dr. Busan, uh, this mission and great development of authority of Pakistan are at your disposal. If you need any kind of help, guidance, information uh, from um, trade section in Embassy of Pakistan, Jordan, I am at your disposal. You can just email me. You can uh, just send me a WhatsApp message. I will inshallah provide all the detail and information. Thank you very much. And I'm really thankful to TDAP, Sana, for uh, cooperating and organizing this. Thank you so much, everyone, for your precious time. And we hope to have more webinars like this so that our pharmaceutical sector can be boosted up and more pharmaceutical products can be exported to different countries of the world. Inshallah. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Allah.